From Beijing, the Communist Party of China, the CPC, hosted a special high-level meeting under the name of Dialogue with World Political Parties. In Colombia, at least 11 mining workers died and others remained trapped after a strong explosion in the village of El Cajón, in the municipality of Sudatausa, in the department of Cundinamarca. And also Ethiopia hosts the 55th session of the Conference of African Ministers of Finance, Planning and Economic Development, focused on transformation and reducing inequalities. From the headquarters of Telesuri English in Havana, Cuba, this is from the south. I'm your anchor, Gladys Quesada, and these are the news. On Wednesday in Beijing, the Communist Party of China, the CPZ, hosted a special high-level meeting under the theme of dialogue with world political parties. The dialogue between China's ruling party and other political parties from across the world took place via video link. At the event, Chinese President Xi Jinping steamed working together towards a community with shared future for humanity and better world, all responsibilities of political parties. The CPZ invited representatives of nearly 300 parties and political organizations from more than 120 countries. Nicolás Maduro Moros, the president of Venezuela and head of the United Socialist Party of Venezuela, took part of the gathering and highlighted the importance of international cooperation in the building of a multipolar world. We look at the world ¿Cómo se trata de poner a prueba la energía maravillosa de los pueblos? How they're trying to test the energy of the people. They'll look for independence, peace, and equality and development. How they try to impose a unipolar model. Not recognizing the diversity of the human civilization. Not knowing our cultural power, the spiritual power of the people. That's not possible in the 21st century. At the dialogue that brought together political leaders from around the world, the Venezuelan president also stressed that imperialist power must give way to people's power in the 21st century. Imperial times are over. The times of the people are here. I'm here to stay. Nobody can doubt that. Presidents, political leaders, Nobody can doubt that there is a time of a new world that we call a multipolar world. A world of independence and integration of the people. Also, Daniel Ortega, the president of Nicaragua and head of the Sandinist Front for National Liberation, also took part in the dialogue hosted by the Communist Party of China and addressed the main characteristics that must structure the future world. The world we want to build must be based on peace, understanding, and solidarity, cooperation, that share the, ad the advances in science and technology to foster the good of the people. As part of the dialogue that China's Communist Party held with world political leaders, Cyril Ramaphosa, president of South Africa and leader of the National African Congress, spoke of the mission that guides the ANC. The African National Congress is a liberation movement which follows revolutionary progress tradition. Our mission is to guide the people in solving all social and economic ailments. We also strive for the progress of human civilization. 
In South Africa, we negotiate the end of the apartheid and we forget a democratic consensus, a process in which we had to dialogue with our enemies. From this experience, we learn a profound lesson which continues to define our position of principles on many global issues, which is that dialogue is always preferable to violence. Now we move on to other topics. In less than four months, Guatemala will be holding presidential elections and progressive parties warned about a high risk of fraud. So far, 16 presidential candidates and their running mates have formalized their registration. However, the progressive organization Movimiento por la Liberación de los Pueblos, or Movement for the People's Liberation, whose candidates have been excluded from the process without legal grounds, says that both the courts and the electoral authority are co-opted. In this way, they argue that while their candidates Telma Cabrera and Jordan Rojas are left out, candidates who are part of the State Department's list of corrupt and anti-democratic individuals have been registered. In Colombia, at least 11 mining workers died and others are trapped after a strong explosion occurred this Tuesday, affecting three mines in the village of El Cajon, in the municipality of Sutatausa, Department of Cundinamarca, in Colombia. The Departmental Fire Department reported that seven miners managed to get out of the rest zone, but two identified as Julian Corredor and Eduard Navarrete are still trapped in the 900-meter hole in the mine El Lucero. The authorities have asked the community to remain calm and avoid access in the accident site. So far, and according to local authorities' reports, at least 11 miners died due to the blast. The governor, Nicolás García Bustos, informed that he is awaiting news of 19 others who were also working inside the mine. At 11 p.m. on Thursday, March 14th, an explosion occurred inside a mine of the municipality of Satatuasa in the village of El Cajon. We have already been able to verify the rescue of seven miners, but we still need the report of about 19 more people who were working inside the mine. There is the Red Cross, firefighters, civil defense, the National Mining Agency, and all the relief entities in the place, and we hope from this moment in the Unified Command Post to be able to generate reports of the situation of the mine, of course, mainly of the people that we still need to find and identify. Let's take a short break. But first, remember you can follow us on our TikTok account at Tell Us With English, in which you will be able to see news in different formats, news updates, and more. Other stories coming up, stay with us. Welcome back. A fire broke on Tuesday in the facilities of the Deer Park Refinery of Pemex in the state of Texas in the United States. This will be the second fire in less than three weeks, but the fourth fire at the Pemex facility in Texas or Mexico since February 23rd, when three fires broke out on the same day. The state-owned company said that the fire was put out in 20 minutes. Pemex workers are assessing damages and they are investigating the cause of the fire. No one yes, has yet been reported injured in the incident. Teachers, London underground train drivers and civil servants joined striking doctors on Wednesday in a mass stoppage as Britain's finance minister was due to unveil his tax and spending plan. With hundreds of thousands of people due to walk out, it threatens to be the biggest single day of industrial since a wave of unrest began last year. Other groups walking out on Wednesday are university staff across the UK and BBC journalists in England. The walkout by the train staff in the Asliff and Rail, Maritime and Transport Unions in London left the entire underground train network at a standstill. As well as pay, which workers say has not kept up with inflation, other issues include conditions, job security and pensions, with the government promises to extend and a subsidy on energy bills for a further three months to alleviate households spending hit by the 10% inflation.
French unions are holding an eighth national day of protests, which has been refilled by the parliament's decision to move forward with a pension reform despite social unrest. The French parliament has agreed on increasing the retirement age limit to 64 years and has spiked political tensions which are being felt in the streets of Paris and other French cities. The most conservative broadcasts put at 850,000 the number of people who will take to the streets of Paris. The marches will be followed by calls for more strikes. President Emmanuel Macron refused to meet with union representatives and the situation in the National Assembly is complicated, as some conservatives could abstain from voting in favor of Macron's reform. And the Chinese government describes as hypocritical the declarations of the August Alliance on the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Agreement. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson Wang Wenbin recalled that the AUKUS leaders began on Monday the implementation of a three-phase plan to deliver nuclear-powered submarines with non-nuclear weapons to Australia. Wenbin said that with such actions, the leaders of the alliance break their international obligations and undermine peace and stability in the region and the world calling their statements hypocritical. According to the official, the delivery of weaponry to Australia constitutes a threat of proliferation of nuclear arms and violates the objectives of the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. The Asia-Pacific region is the region of the world with the most vitality and fastest growth. This is an extremely precious situation. China urges the three countries to listen attentively to the demands of the international community and regional countries, abandon outdated Cold War zero-sum mentality and narrow geopolitical concepts, effectively fulfill international obligations and avoid taking actions that harm regional and global peace and stability. In Moscow, Russian President Vladimir Putin received Syrian President Bashar al-Assad for talks in the Kremlin. The meeting is expected to focus on the rebuilding of Syria after a devastating civil war as well as mending the country's ties with Turkey. Kremlin spokesperson Dmitry Peskov said the two leaders will talk about post-war reconstruction and the continuation of the peace process in all of its aspects, with an emphasis on the absolute priority of Syria's sovereignty and territorial integrity. Wednesday's meetings comes on the anniversary of Syria's 12-year civil war that has killed nearly 500,000 people and displaced half of the country's pre-war population. And now we move on to other topics. Russian President Vladimir Putin said on Tuesday that a ship owned by the energy giant Gazprom discovered evidence of a possible explosive device on one of the Nord Stream gas pipelines. In an interview with the Rosia One television channel, Putin revealed that the ship discovered a pillar in one of the pipe's joints about 30 kilometers down the pipeline. According to experts, it could be an antenna for the detonation of an explosive device that could be planted under the pipeline system. The Russian president denied that a pro-Ukrainian group could be behind the sabotage of the gas pipelines, adding that such an action can only be carried out by specialists, backed by the full power of a state. President Putin considers that the project still has a future if the European countries show interest in restoring it. And the Russian Ministry of Defense reports that its country neutralized on Sunday 440 Ukrainian military units as part of its special military operation. The ministry also reported 110 Ukrainian casualties in the Krasnolimansky region, where the Russian troops destroyed two pickup trucks and a self-propelled artillery piece. The report also says that 190 Kiev soldiers, as well as Three tanks and mechanized armored vehicles were eliminated in the direction of Donetsk. The Ministry of Defense concluded that, in total, 400 Ukrainian planes and 220 helicopters were shot down. Telosur English continues to grow. You can now tune in from 33 different African countries through StarSat. Dial 461 and enjoy our Latin American alternative broadcast. One final short break and we'll be right back. Stay with us.
Welcome back to From the South. The 55th session of the Conference of African Ministers of Finance, Planning and Economic Development opens in Ethiopia with a focus on transformation and reducing inequalities. Representatives of member states and entities of the United Nations system, as well as pan-African financial, academic and research institutions linked to development and intergovernmental organizations will be there. According to the Economic Commission for Africa, the coordinating body of the event, the current global situation poses a challenge to the objectives set by the Alliance and will be the focus of debate at the meeting to be held in the Ethiopian capital of Addis Ababa. The naval forces of China, Russia and Iran have started security bond exercises in the Gulf of Oman. The tactical tasks will last from this Wednesday until next March 19th. During that time, other countries will also join in. These exercises, which have already been held twice before, are intended to help deepen practical cooperation between the armed forces of the participating nations and provide clear evidence of commitment to joint peacekeeping and maritime security. China certified the dispatch of the Nanning guided missiles destroyer to the area. Now we move on to other topics. In Turkey, at least 10 people have died and five went missing after floods caused by torrential rains wreaked havoc in the country's two southeastern provinces, already devastated by last month's earthquakes. Heavy downpours triggered severe flooding in the southeastern Turkish city of San Lurfa, turning streets into rivers and submerging highways and cars. The major flooding has forced authorities to shut down schools and transfer patients from hospitals in severely affected areas to other medical facilities. By Wednesday morning, several homes and businesses were submerged in floodwaters. Emergency teams were dispatched Tuesday night to help stranded motorists. And nearly 200 people are now confirmed dead in Malawi after the devastating tropical cyclone Freddy ripped through southern Africa for the second time in a month. The rain continues to fall and overwhelmed rescue workers continue to find both the death and the survivors and the mud and the death toll is expected to rise. There has been extensive damage to infrastructure and homes, power and communications are still down in many affected areas and an estimated of 19,000 people have been displaced by the heavy rains that triggered floods and mudslides. The United Nations said the lack of power and communications is hindering aid operations and with most of affected regions still inaccessible, the full extent of the damage remains unknown. NGOs fear that the number of cholera cases will increase in the country, which is already struggling with the deadliest infectious disease it was ever known. What we are seeing here is a crisis. So far we are talking about 122 people that uh, we have confirmed that they have lost their lives but quite a number of them that are missing. And this demands that all of us come in uh, and support. People have been displaced, thousands and thousands, in all the 10 districts. Palombe. We received a lot of rain around lunch hour, and this resulted in a flash flood from the hill, which swept away a lot of people, including my father, my sister, and two girls. This means that four people of my family are still missing as they are buried in the mood. And now let's go to the sports. Cuba and Australia, two countries, have had the close one-run matches in past World Baseball Classics for to advance to the semifinals in Miami. The matchup ended up being another victory for Cuba, 4-3. Australia scored first in the top of the second when Derek George doubled and came home on a Rickson Wingrove run batted single. Cuba tied it up on a Luis Robert Jr. Grand Hout in the third and then extended its lead in the fifth with three runs. After that, Alfredo de Spain smacked a sacrifice fly to right and Gibert lined a two-run single through the right side. The Aussies refused to give up. Wingrove stepped up to the plate in the top of the sixth and blasted one out to the right center field 
field for a two-run shot that will pull Australia back to within a run. But that was all Australia could muster against Raidel Martinez, who pitches for the Chunchinichi Dragons in Nippon Professional Baseball and close out the win. We have come to the end of this news brief, but remember you can find this and many other stories on our website at telesurienglish.net. And also, if you feel so inclined, please join us on social media for all the latest news. We are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Telegram, and TikTok. For Telesur English, I'm your anchor Gladys Quesada. Thank you for watching.